Hi, my name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to create effective UI system tests with Selenium. You probably know that I'm a big fan of the whole topic of testing and that it's super important in order to be successful uh, for any software project. And the question is also, well, if we write an enterprise application or a web app, how do we test that the whole UI works? That basically when the user would hit the website would just, you know, get everything uh, correctly. So for that reason, I actually extended my coffee shop testing project that you might know if you watched uh, some of my content for some uh, UI views. So now it's not only the REST endpoints that we have, but also actually some HTML views, very basic ones, but still enough uh, to get a proper testing right. And what we have in this coffee shop project is that basically we have some coffee orders where we can, well, order some system. Uh, order some uh, coffees and how that works is we hit that link to create some coffee orders and then we well would like to order some coffee where we need to select a drink type what we would actually like to order and then the origin beans but the beans like that are available in the shop depend on the drink we would like to have right because there are different uh, coffee origins that might be better suited for certain drink types and so on so we would like to select espresso first and then we will have an update on the origins that are available uh, for these. So in this case, I would like to uh, select and create some espresso from Ethiopia and then say create. And now, OK, great. We have some espresso from Ethiopia in the system. So that's already good news. And then in this case, we see the order here in our list. So that's super basic and that's so, sort of the equivalent of what I showed you earlier in some uh, system tests that only use an HTTP endpoint. So now what I would like to do, I would like to create or show you some way to use Selenium to basically do the same thing. And if you know about Selenium, this is a testing technology or actually a browser driver technology, if you want, where we can programmatically use a browser driver such as Chrome to basically do stuff in the same way like we, you know, would move our mouse around, click some link, put in something uh, for a form and so on and so forth. And in order to do that, I want to show you some tests, but also I want to show you how to make these tests in an effective way. Because out there you will find quite some material, how to get started with Selenium and all of that. But that's not really the point of this video. It's more about to how to use it in a more effective or more manageable way. Because what will happen to you if you start using these tests, they very quickly become quite complex to manage. And it, it's really important um, to care about proper, well, crafting our code, how to craft our code, how to put the architecture right if you want, and um, also how to proper, uh, properly build up the delegates and ab abstraction layers. So it's very similar to a previous topic of testing. But anyway, let's start here. I typically create tests in a very basic fashion. So this is uh, JUnit 5 in that case, but you can use whatever you like. But I typically want to have tests that have no other test runner where the test lifecycle is very independent for good reasons, because now you see my system is already up and running and I well can create a delegate here already that basically acts as the driver for my coffee shop project. So how that looks like and you see this is super basic Java. I just create a class that encapsulates some of the business logic and this is really key. Right, because if you start um, going and hitting the uh, Selenium API, something like WebDriver, please create this for a Chrome, and then you know go to the following URL and so on and so forth. If you would have all of that code directly in your test, what happens is they become unmanageable. So you're really encouraged to build up uh, c uh, proper APIs where you encapsulate the business um, logic that you want uh, want to use. So what I do here is, and now let's just uh, a little bit focus on uh, on that uh, first. So in it might be some initialization here. So we say, well, please go to that index HTML site. This is actually not required. It's just to show you how we would add a cookie. If you, for example, test some authentication, you can do that in, in such a way uh, for testing purposes. And um, this is actually similar to my, my typical system tests, what I do, like how to uh, create the URI so that is configurable. We could change it for some other setting. 
And then now the interesting part, create a coffee order. So basically what I would like to do, and as always, as for any system test, please think of that first. From a very abstract point of view, what do you want to create? Don't start thinking about, well, how does the HTTP or JSON look like? Or here, how does the HTML structure look like? No, not important. Think of it from a user perspective. What do I, um, do I want to do? I want to create some coffee order, maybe with espresso from Colombia. Now, the point is how to get that right. Well, if I look at the website, it's something like, this is now a little bit more subtle. It requires a little bit more creativity rather than to use just an API because in the API, it's very straightforward. It's very technical what we need to do. But here on the website, you know, a lot of things could go wrong or the layout could be wrong and things like that or the link descriptions could change. So for example, I say in order to create a coffee order, I need to follow that link. Right. And in order to identify that, maybe it has a certain CSS classes or I search for a description. Um, so literally, it depends on, you know, how to, you how you want to specify that here. What I do well, please follow a certain link and then go to some other pages. Now, the thir uh, first thing here, index view, let's start with that coffee shop index. What it does, it goes to that index view, which is literally that uh, this view here with the table of my coffee orders. And what I do, and this is um, already a recommendation, what I always start with, I basically craft um, test classes for every view, or it's not um, actually a test class, it's, it's a class within a test scope. So I just craft a class uh, for every page or view or whatever it makes sense to encapsulate whatever you want to do there. Otherwise, what happens, you end up with huge classes with, you know, hundreds of methods. So the index view basically says, well, please navigate to that URL and just create a view that encapsulates this driver anyway. And then I, you know, I can have a base class, for example, with something like a, a weight API or some methods that I need in all views. So I can create a small structure for that. But I really want to keep it simple and I especially want to uh, keep it focused for the business um, perspective that I want to test. For example, let's say get page header. And this is really, you know, the API of that method get, uh, get page header for a string. However, you do that, that's now part of the view. So the view has basically the structure and the connection how my actual view looks like the HTML. So say, well, please driver try to find the element and this is very similar now to JavaScript uh, programming or you know, to uh, operating on a DOM to say, please find the element selected by whatever a CSS selector, this is very straightforward, and now try to get the inner text. So in this case, it will actually go on my page and see get the page header, it will ultimately give us this text. Why? Because let's have a look at the HTML. And in my case, my application is a Quarkus application that's um, with a Quarkus cute templating syntax, but it really doesn't matter. The um, resulting HTML looks as follows that I have a body and an h1 tag. So it will basically select this element and then get the inner text. So that's a very basic example. And then I can, for example, assert that where's my test here, assert that as uh, my page header is equal to this. Well, that's now the, uh, the second view already, but you get the point uh, that is basically the schema. Now what I do as well with these views is that again, I like to separate the classes for the actual views that I have. So my index view is rather simple. I have my page header, then I get my orders. Well, how do I get the orders? Well, I basically go to the table and see well for every table row, see, you know what that looks like, and then try to map an order out of that. And this is again, the same mechanism as for other backend uh, system tests, where I say, please create a very thin API that I use within my tests. Why? Because then I can abstract these things like orders, and I can use them in my actual test class in my test code or my test method. And I don't have to care about the underlying details, right? So then I can actually reuse up, up to some sort, uh, the actual test code for other scenarios. So in this case, if something changes on the underlying structure, that's another point, then I only have to modify this method and not the 100 of uh, test methods that I would otherwise uh, need to change. So let's try to create something. So let's follow and create the order link. This basically 
follows this link. So I will click on that and you know navigate on the next view. And in order to find that, now you have multiple ways to do that. So for example, you could really make it identifiable using an ID um, for the HTML tag or some class. In this case, I actually want to search for the text. So I say, please have some create something link. So it's gonna be in uh, uh, this tag. And then please navigate to the href. Okay, then I create another of these components of these abstractions for my other view for my order view. And now this is getting a little bit more interesting of what uh, Selenium can do. And under the hood, it's really powerful. So what I can say, for example, please try to find some element like some select tags and then, you know, select something and fill out a form. So this is really cool for automation in general, but especially for our tests. So in, in our case, what, uh, what do I do? Again, I try to craft this abstraction. So I only say order coffee, this type, this origin. How that's done internally, that's part of this class, right? But my test doesn't want to know that specifically. So order the coffee and this actually, well, it assumes that if everything goes right and that's the part of the test, so you can actually create multiple methods, then I assume that I'd be redirected to the index view and then, you know, the index view will contain that coffee. But internally now I have to do quite some stuff because let's try it out manually again. If I follow the site now, first of all, I would like to select some type so I can say the type would be espresso. And now I see what happens actually, this will be updated. Why? Because again, the origin, it depends on the type. So what happens internally, and now don't be hung up on the, the code. So this is just a little bit of um, HTML code plus some JavaScript that I use. So internally it does um, an Ajax request to the types and then will update uh, the select uh, box of basically which origins are available for that type. And well, now in our test, this might be a little bit challenging because if we select the first one and then we immediately select a second one and the point is Selenium is much faster than a human could click, right? It would just select, select but that might not be enough to basically, well, make sure that the browser can update, that it can successfully handle that Ajax request. So what we need to do, we need to put in some weights. And this is now an interesting thing uh, in Selenium that we basically need to think of it from maybe a human perspective to say, okay, actually, what is the point that tells us that the website is now like finished, that we wait for a certain condition that we then can continue. So for example, it might be a loading spinner icon where we need to check for the icon to actually disappear until it says, well, now please wait, now continue, right? So like you would tell for a human, now please wait until a certain condition is met and now you might, uh, you may uh, continue. And now we need to do a certain uh, or a similar thing. So we have a fluent uh, waiting API that I include sometimes in the view here where we say, please wait with a timeout for a certain condition. And now this depends what that condition is uh, in our case and say, well, please wait until this attribute of the origin, that is the second select box is not disabled anymore. Why? Because once we update something, it actually will just will update uh, that uh, internal state and then I can, uh, it is selectable. The same is true for the button actually before it was disabled. And now if we, um, selected something, then we can select a second thing also. So uh, that is something we can do. And here, let's check out this method, submit button, then click. And then I assume that everything works. So I go back to my index view, because I know that once I click here, I will actually be redirected. And then I can use this in my test and basically say, in order to create some coffee order, go to the order view, check out the page header. Now you see this is actually quite readable. Now please create um, uh, and order some coffee. And now I'm back on the index view. And now in the index view, well, please get the listed orders, right? And the listed orders should now include my coffee orders here. And the last one should be what I just ordered. So then please, you know, assert that the size is now one more than before. And now, um, get that last order and see whether it's espresso from Colombia. So that is basically the test what we would like to assert from a, a user perspective. And now let me try to run that. And now we see actually you saw it that uh, the website now the font is smaller here. 
uh, that the website runs really, really fast. So as you see, it's actually, I, I think, kind of cool to watch the Selenium test. Uh, we see that it has been selected quite quickly and also that now there is one more order uh, being included here. The test is green. I can actually run it again. And then we see that for every run, just quite quickly, this browser window will open and it will select um, that uh, coffee uh, uh, properties and then create it quite quickly, faster than I can talk. All right, so that's actually pretty cool already. So this is, uh, you know, some of the basics, how to create that structure that helps us to be maintainable in these tests. And then also um, how to basically execute the test and write it in a way that it's readable and maintainable. So if I now would like to change something here, then I would just need to, you know, um, make some few changes and I can have a different test method. Now, another thing is also that I find quite interesting. Um, we can be very creative with these tests and we can, of course, assert for certain conditions. So for example, a typical thing is, well, did I create my HTML or my site in such a way that is still um, selectable by a keyboard? So for example, that I can use the keyboard and tap and so on and so forth uh, to make that uh, selectable. For example, I could go and say, well, please create the coffee order. And now I can select it using tap and then, you know, next espresso and then select back and forth and then please create that in this way and that should also work. So for example, I can have a similar business use case uh, for our test, but say, well, now please order coffee select with keyboard, for example. And then I can be really creative here. So this is now a little bit uh, different, um, but I wanted to show you this because it's really important to build up our tests with that also. And Selenium is very flexible and powerful. We can say, well, just, you know, send some random keys to the website and it should you know, behave um, uh, as expected. So for example, I can say select with a keyboard. What it, what it does, it goes down as long as it, or until it finds the, uh, the text that it's uh, searching for in the select box. And then the same for the origin select. And then if you're on the origin, if I'm a user who like I just did wants to select a tap uh, bar, what I want to do is to just, you know, tap forward and then hit enter to not click uh, on the button or basically um, submit it by hitting enter. That should work as well. And then I want to be on the index view there as well. So what I can do, I can try out that uh, test to run it in this way. We will now probably see little difference because uh, if it goes on that website for us, it just also very quickly, if you saw it, um, will select these. But actually what it did, it selected it using a keyboard. And then, for example, if our JavaScript has some different key listeners, if we have some special actions using the keyboard, we can test that as well um, using Selenium. So just to wrap it up, one of the most important things is, as always, in uh, having proper maintainable tests, is to create proper abstraction layers and using delegation to make our test maintainable. To first of all, start from a very naive user perspective. What do we want to test in our test scenario and then take it from there? And especially if our uh, tests become very complex under the hood, like these UI tests where we need to do a lot of navigation and back and forth and uh, handling these Selenium APIs and selecting the correct elements, this really makes sense to encapsulate them in specific classes. And what I like to do is I like to create uh, several components for each page or for each you know, action or whatever uh, the coherent uh, mechanisms or components are on your website. Um, such as uh, these different views. And then these views contain the business specific uh, things. For example, say get the list of all coffee orders and that already includes a somewhat um, more focused API. So an API that abstracts all of these details, how we would like to use them from within the tests. So I think this is really helpful to create effective system UI tests with Selenium. And if you take it from there, it's actually very fun, I believe, to create these uh, type of tests. And especially it's very helpful to be sure that your website later on works. It's a little bit more challenging to test whether the actual layout looks correctly from a human perspective, but then at least the functionality is given and you can check that there are no JavaScript errors on your page and things like that. So with that, you can be quite sure that if you make some changes on your code that later on even your views in your web app will still work as expected. I hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot for watching.